But to, well, let's hear from you, Mr. Robert Kedia. Uh, we look at some of the difficulties that uh, the those in those two regions are going through. They say, "He who wears the shoes knows where it pinches." Well, uh, Mr. Kedia has highlighted some of the uh, challenges, corpses of uh, the population being seized and taken into the bushes, and uh, populations are uh, people are kidnapped for ransom. We look at all these, don't you think the people are fed up and somehow that's the reason why maybe they are giving information to the military to, you know, uh, invade the hideouts of the separatists? The role of spy. The role of spy in any war did not yeah. start with the Ambazonian War of Independence. Maybe in the First World War, it happened. In almost all the wars in the world, there have always been spies for and against. But before I come to your problem of the people being fed up because uh, no matter what, I can never agree to the method used by the Ambazonian fighters to intimidate, to kill, to terrorize our people. Because the method, the method is not the method that a real and a bona fide born Southern Cameroonian opted for. That one, I don't hide it any longer. The method is a bad method. Now, let's find out who taught them the bad method to use. The government taught them. The government taught them. Yeah, who shot? They are who? using this uh, against the same people they claim they are protecting. I am, com I am coming, Luis. Yeah. I am coming. The government taught them how to cut people's necks. Sam Soya, who was the first person to be butchered at the squares, three corners, Bello, my hometown, where I come from, was cut with a knife by the military forces whom I believe they are well trained. They know what it means to be qualified war crimes. They know what it means to take a suspect during a war period. And they know how to exploit such a suspect to get information, not beheading. No, we're talking about the first bullet. Of, of no, I, I know, uh, I know. Yeah. We, are, we are talking about Ngusang. Yeah. The first bullet came out from the government, so the government should be held accountable. Now, talking about, I, I want to quickly respond to what my brother Kedia said picking up arms. Mm -hmm. Let not be carried away by this kind of CBDM, uh, CBDM, CBDM uh, on the other hand everywhere I mean you, you have to understand that before these people pick up arms the government shot the first bullet if the government had not shot the first bullet I am not very sure that would have been where we are today that said two evils are killing Cameroon at a time bad governance that has opted for the option of the gun and the amber boys who have diverted from what the people of southern Cameroonians wanted and your question, your question was, are the people not fed up? Why do you think that the people should not be fed up? My mother escaped dead from the hands of these very boys. Why do you think that people should not be, 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 be fed up? When the same boys comes after you and they ask for long sums of money, from the beginning, everybody, look, these boys have derailed the whole story. But I can assure you, the, 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 the spirit, the feeling, the marginalization of the Anglophones, who call the Southern Cameroonian, is spiritual. What these boys are doing is physical. Their own case will end one day. But the spirit and the feeling of that marginalization in us Anglophones remain. We are fed up with the method that these boys are using, but we are not fed up with the feeling of the marginalization. It remains in us. That is why you will discover that not everybody will collaborate against them. Those who are even against them, in their spirit, they know that they are still fighting a war that was declared against them by people who have marginalized them for, for more than 60 years. But it all boils down to bad leadership, Luis. If the leadership in place was a leadership that listens to the people, was a leadership that sought to solve or to provide solutions to the problem of the people, we will not have been where we are today. So we are where we are today because of problems that are man-made in Cameroon. That man-made problem in Cameroon have been was started by Ahijo 
has been aggravated by Mr. Bia and his CBDM, who have often said there is no anglophone problem. And there are people who have been promoted simply because they said there was no anglophone problem in Cameroon. Today, there are ministers. Some of them have, have, have even become ministers of mattress sharing in Cameroon. Everywhere you see them running, they are at the forefront of everything. Whereas at the beginning, they said there was no anglophone problem. So I think to better the francophone say, pour mieux sauter, il faut reculer. At this time, I want to think that we have to make some steps back before we jump a step ahead. And that step back is to ask our question, beginning from the head of state. Was the option of war necessary? Has the option of war given a solution? Will the option of war fix or leave the Cameroon that I wished to leave? Uh, Metro Alex, for since 2017, we saw the population they've been collaborating with uh, the separatists. When uh, the crisis turned into an armed conflict in 2017, the population, you know, have been siding with the separatists. But where we are today in 2023, the same population that the separatists claim they were supporting uh, are the people we see now they are executing on live uh, camera. With regards to equally the challenges that the population have been going through, recently we, we saw uh, two weeks in post goes down and all this boils down to, uh, you know, the, 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 the weight force on the population. Don't you think the population are fed up with all this? And they now being in the middle, caught up in the middle between the Amazonian and the military, don't you think that they are chosen the side and now uh, it's falling back on them? The population, of course, don't you think they are fed up with uh, the challenges they are going through with regards to what is happening? Mr. Luis, the way I will answer your question, the reason people have a government, mm -hmm. it's a social contract. When, like Mr. Kadji said, that, oh, the government was elected, we had a prime minister in the UK who spent 45 days as prime minister. Being elected doesn't mean it's democracy. The point is, the population, I have a copy of the Constitution of Cameroon. It, there's nothing about the population there. If our country, you don't go into government to sleep in a bed of roads. You go there to work for the people. You collect tax to work for the people. Let's assume, yes, there's a problem in Cameroon. They are killing people. The reason you were elected in power is to solve that problem. And my problem, I have a lot of concern when it comes to Mr. Kadir. I was in the national dialogue. I was the only person who brought to the attention of the decentralization committee that the invitation letter said invitation for major national dialogue to discuss the problem in northwest and southwest region as you call it full stop it was never discussed so you keep on talking about dialogue and i would like to draw the attention to mr kadir this is very important how do you feel Let's call it as an Anglophone or Southern Cameroonians. How do you feel that the money that you're using in Cameroon, there's no English written on that money? How do you feel? How do you feel that a NAM, that is a French culture that was brought in France, they are imposing it on Anglophone? Are you comfortable? A Economist Superior from France, are you comfortable? Military tribunal trying civilians in a military court. How comfortable are you? Gendarmerie from France. That's the anglophone problem. Do you need to be discussing? I went to Ngwakere, then Yaoundé University, the only university in Cameroon. I studied public law. 99% of public law was in French. We struggled, I passed. We fought for Boya University because we said, no, this is not enough. I was in Guacala when the then 
government delegate of Yaoundé, Emma Bazi, said that enemy dans la maison, le Biafra, allez chez vous. He said things. It's not today. I'm against arms. I'm against people using arms. But I'm just telling you, you don't know what some of us have gone through in that country. The problem is not between Anglophone civilians and Francophone civilians. The problem is a government. And we have some Anglophones. Mr. Kaja, I should say you're one of them now. And I will say this, you're looking your way in life and you think you must sing that praises that we say we thank the head of state. I'm telling you, I have a different political opinion with Mr. Bia, but I'm very close to Mr. Bia, but I don't agree with his policies. But sometimes we forget the bigger picture and we start saying, when the Anglophones, they join the Republic of Cameroon, what was it then? Do you want to join Nigeria or do you want to join the Republic of Cameroon? We were not conquered. We agreed to join. 300 years ago, Scotland decided to join the English people. They said, we don't want it again. They said, have a referendum in 2014. They voted that they want to stay with the United Kingdom. So what dialogue are you talking about? The point is, yes, no, our civilians are suffering. They are suffering. Why? You have to solve the problem. Sometimes we say we keep on dialoguing. There's an unemployment. Sometimes the people will call, Amber, how do you know that somebody is a separatist or not a separatist? Since this crisis started, I've never heard about criminals, thieves anymore. Anybody can take arms because of unemployment, the failure of the government. The government has failed to create jobs. Most people from the English region, they go to Douala, Yaoundé to look for jobs. Why can they not have industries in their own area? Why can they not have airport? If you look at our situation in Cameroon, the first time I went to Northwest region in Cameroon, I took a flight. I was a baby from Tiko International Airport to Balinyonga Airport. I was a baby. We had power camp. Tiko International Airport, a lot of other things. Why are we so destructive? The problem is that the law of diminishing marginal return is facing us. Yes, all of us on this panel, we don't like killing. When I went to Bamenda, when I was a teenager, I used to walk the street at night from Sonak Street to Commission Avenue. Nobody used to disturb me. We can just stand and say, okay, they are criminals. These people are bad. They kill people. Okay, since this crisis started, I have never seen your government bringing the killer of Florence Ayafu, not to talk of Alaji Tita Fomukon, that was killed about in 2000 and early 1990, early 1990 in Bamenda. We have never seen anybody. We have a court that does not exist. They don't do anything. I would be happy to see people who commit offense to face the criminal justice system. Don't kill people and put gun behind them, beside them, then you put amber flag. I have a cousin from Balinyonga. He was killed. And they said he was amber. He was not amber. He was not armed. And when they killed him, they put things beside him. And luckily, I had an uncle who saw it and begged the gendarme. They gave the cops to that place. So sometimes, when they, they trademark this extrajudicial killing, we have seen it. I'm not saying all the military. The Cameroon government, the military, they do the same thing. They refuse. The former minister of communication, um, Chiruma, he refused when they killed some people in the north of Cameroon. BBC, other people, they check and they say they kill women and children. That's extrajudicial killing. It happens. The problem is we don't have an effective judicial system in Cameroon. And Mr. Kedja, listen, there's something I should tell you. Belonging to any political party doesn't make any difference to me. Some of my great friends in my life, they come from the CPDM and other political parties. We have differences, doesn't matter. When there is no light in Yaoundé, it affects all of us. When there is no water in Boya, it affects all of us. Sometimes, just come out from your, come out from your high horse and sit down and accept the general problem that we have. You are there today. Yesterday, so a couple of people, they died in Yaoundé, Obara, or whatsoever. They were killed. Those are Cameroonians. Why? You say, oh, drivers are driving bad or whatever. We should look at what 
we have in common. When the people, Dr. Endeli, removed the people from Eastern House, Inugu, and gave them autonomy in, in Boya in 1954, he said what? We are sick of these people. And he came to Boya. Okay, we, the English-speaking Cameroonian, accepted to join our French brothers. Good, we are African. So, Mr. Keja, can you answer this question? If I decide to get into a marriage, do I yeah, have Matt, the right uh, to say, okay, it's not working, I want to leave? Matt, let me get the opinion of the other uh, uh, panelists. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. John Bakuro, the, the question I want to ask you is, you, you indicated your regrets following the killing of uh, those uh, unarmed civilians in the uh, Northwest region. But the question is, who are those giving those instructions to uh, those guys carrying guns who commit such atrocities? Do they have leaderships? Uh, Mr. Big Ben, before I really get to answering that specific question, I want to react very quickly to a few things that uh, Mr. Kedia said in just 30 seconds. You see, I like to be very specific about this here. When you talk about when they burn people's houses, how the people react, who is responsible for burning houses all over Southern Cameroon? The videos are there, everything is there. The military have burned down whole villages. About 400 villages have been reduced to ashes by that military. When he talks about rape, we saw the military of La Republic du Cameroon pull students out of their hostels in the University of Boya, rob them in mud, rape some, desecrate them. We saw them in Balinyunga. Do you recall that at some point the colonial governor in Bamenda had to call a policeman that was caught live raping a young, a young mother, a young girl of, of, of about 23, with child? So when Mr. KJ is talking, I want to ask, who is he routing for? For a British murderous administration or for the people he claims to be his people? And when you make reference to uh, uh, elected officials, even elected by who? Because I've had to tell Bella Moki and the others to their faces when I can, that nobody elected them. They are all imposters. You know, Elekam has the figures. No elections have been taking place in Southern Cameroon since 2016. Because when they tell you a figure of 3%, 5%, you know it's the military and other civil servants who are out there and who are counted in to, to go and vote. The people are clear about one thing. We are not separatists. We are pro-independentists. We are not separating because we never belong to La Republic of Cameroon. Lamberti Mizinga said, we agreed to get into a union which never even materialized. And the Republic of Cameroon turned around to think that they could simply colonize us. This is where we are. Going back to your question now, as you're asking, who is it that you instruction? Is the same question that I will ask you, you regarding those talks on Yaoundé. Who are slutting people up? If you talk about extrajudicial killings, 90% of those extrajudicial killings are committed by the by the forces of Mr. Paul Bia in the southern Cameroons. Now, for the various groups, they all know their leaders, their leaders are not hiding. No, their leaders are not hiding. 